Good morning, everybody. This is Travis. I wanted to create a video today. I was motivated because uh, when I was going through my morning ritual of looking through YouTube, uh, I noticed a notification uh, on a video that I had, uh, I posted a comment on a couple years ago as I finished up my publishing, my self-publishing of my book, uh, The Way of the Badge, which is right there. Um, and there were several questions I had, I guess I'd missed, I didn't, get, I didn't get the notifications or whatever, but several people had um, questions about how I'd sold 50 books in a short period of time or whatever. Um, I've since, uh, since sold, I think, just under a thousand books. Um, so I'll, I'll try to find those exact numbers for you as I go through this. But I thought it would be uh, just, just the nature of the questions I was getting on that uh, video from Bethany on how she self-published uh, her books. Uh, I thought I'd just go through my experience and, and maybe it helps somebody uh, as they're going through that same journey. I'll tell you that writing a book was, um, was very demanding, but it was awesome. Like, my name is on that book and it will always be on that book and that's a part of my legacy. Um, uh, and in my contribution to my profession, which is law enforcement. I've, I've been in law enforcement for about 35 years, and um, this was kind of the culmination of my experiences uh, written in this book to try to help uh, make the community a little bit better. So this video is just gonna be about like my experience of just getting started, uh, how I got motivated, how I kept motivated, how I found inspiration, how I, uh, just the self-doubt uh, that I had going through writing a book and getting it across the finish line and doing it, just doing the self-publish uh, process. So I thought that was very rewarding. I'm a DIY kind of guy. And so I love the idea of being able to write a book uh, in a Word document and put it together in another software uh, that I'll talk about a little bit later having it edited, creating the cover art. Uh, I had a little help uh, from a friend of mine to get me motivated for the cover art, coming up with the name of the book, you know, everything, just getting some reviews, some testimonials um, that cover the back of the book, back cover. That's a canvas uh, piece, by the way. You can find those online. They just took my cover art and sent it to them and they put it on canvas, which I love. All right, so here we go. So my book is called The Weight of the Badge and it's Critical Incident Response for Law Enforcement. So law enforcement officers experience hundreds of critical incidents throughout their career, whereas most people in their normal day-to-day -day lives, they may experience five, six critical incidents. I mean, and it, that includes the death of family members, things like that. We deal with death and tragic events on a regular basis and it has a profound impact on our mental and physical health. So. Uh, I got frustrated, uh, hoping that someone would change the culture and make things better. Uh, I, I was kind of an observer. I was on the sidelines and decided that, you know what, uh, I'm, I think I know enough. I could, I could actually be the coach on this. And so I started writing. Now, there were lots of, lots of self-doubt as I went through that process of, can I write a book? Do I know enough to write a book? Um, do I have enough content? Uh, is it going to be accurate? How do I ensure it's accurate? How do I appeal to my audience? Like my book is a niche um, book. So it's specifically for law enforcement. Uh, it has a little carryover into other aspects of law enforcement, telecommunicators, uh, potentially corrections folks, uh, things like that, but it's primarily centered on law enforcement. So. I had, at that time, over 30 years of experience, and I felt like I had enough information from being, uh, just carrying a badge, working, working a road, working the street, to being a law enforcement trainer, uh, to being a leader in an organization uh, that I could, I could write this book. Uh, so I, I set out and just started writing, and just some things come into my mind, like I'm a very emotional individual, so uh, I'm very empathetic to other people, and the stories I had heard from other people who had been involved in critical incidents uh, really motivated me and how those incidents were mishandled by their leadership. So I just started writing out some things. It was kind of visceral. Um, you, you could you could feel the emotion in what I was writing because I was very 
Uh, I was uh, really almost angry and I was just tired of being sick and tired of, of how law enforcement was dealing with this issue. So uh, I, I wrote a little bit and then I, I read it, reread it, tweaked it a little bit, I uh, read it some more and I really intended for this to be like the first chapter. And um, after I read it, I thought, you know, I, I don't know if this is good enough. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's much more that I, I have to say. Uh, I had a lot more to say uh, in the end, but uh, at the time I wasn't real sure. And so I had an old uh, sergeant years ago when I first started out uh, who threatened to fire me early in my career. He, uh, he had written a couple of books after he retired. And so I sent him um, just that first piece of writing and just asked him, what do you think? Is this something that needs to be told? Am, am I capable of telling it? Things like that. So his response was a resounding yes. And he told me he would help me, that uh, he would you know, bring in all of his knowledge and experience of publishing two books. And he went through a traditional publisher. I didn't want to go that route. I just wanted to self-publish. Um, and so, that motivated me to write some more. And that first writing actually became my introduction. Uh, it kind of laid the, the baseline for why am I writing the book? I was involved in a shooting early in my career. It was a fatal shooting and it was a horrific event. And so the first chapter was just me telling that story. And it was like 25 years after the event, but I can tell you, I can tell you the story today just like, I could tell you the day after or the evening of that event. And so uh, that was an easy chapter to write. Uh, easy as in it, it came to me very quickly and very easily, but uh, it was very emotional. So I got through that chapter um, and had my wife uh, review it, read it, and sent that one to Richard as well. And uh, once again, you know, it was a resounding, man, this is awesome. Keep, keep going, keep writing. And then I was like, okay, now what am I gonna say? And so I had to go through that process of like, now how am I gonna build out from here? And so I, I had some, some thoughts about uh, how, how do I lay the groundwork for it? Now that I've said what I've said about uh, the need, which was the introduction of this, this is how law enforcement is screwing this up. And here's my real life experience to, to kind of give me some uh, credibility in writing this book uh, and the struggles that I went through and still continue, quite honestly, to go through uh, with PTSD. Um, and so how, how do I go from here? So I, I wrote all of that out. Uh, I had been teaching at, at the academy uh, here in Kentucky. Um, for a few years and so I, I had some some things that I had been teaching in the past and so I, I kind of wrote those things out but then I really got into the weeds on them and I used real life experiences from from those stories that people told me. Um, I ended up changing names. I didn't use anybody's real name. I didn't use anybody's real department. I didn't put department names in it at all just to protect the innocent uh, uh, because this was uh, this was information that was not painting some departments in a very positive light. So obviously I had to, had to change those things up. But I went through that process and uh, I got stuck a couple times, quite honestly. I got to a point where I'm like, I just don't think I can do this. I don't wanna do this. It was so time consuming. Um, like every, almost every weekend I'm writing in the morning before I go to work, I'm writing in the evening. I'm writing sometimes when I'm at work, uh, something would pop into my head and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta write that down. And so I just start writing uh, handwritten notes um, in my iPad or on a, on a pad of paper just so I don't forget it. Maybe in the middle of the night, something would pop into my head and I had that happen a couple of times and I didn't wake myself up to write it down and I lost it. So when those things would pop up in the middle of the night, I'd get up and write it down. So it was an exhausting um, effort, but in the end, it was, it's so worth it. It's so rewarding. I encourage you to, to not let those things get in your way. Um, it, it will be worth it in the end. Just the satisfaction of knowing you published a book is, is pretty awesome. So that's kind of how uh, I got started and some of those self-doubt things I had. You know, I, I, I got to towards the end of the book and I was having uh, a lot of trouble just trying to determine how am I going to finish this book. 
uh, where do I go from here? And I, it, I guess it was writer's block or just struggling with, you know, what, what's next? And um, my wife and I took a little trip down to Florida and we're sitting on the beach and it was just one of those beautiful moments where we're just talking and something came to mind and I articulated it to her and she's like, oh my gosh, that's, that's it, that's it. And so I went back uh, to where we were staying, wrote all that information down, came back and finished the book. So uh, I think that was in, I think our trip was like the first of May and uh, I headed to my editor on August 1. So very, very quickly, I was able to finish that last aspect up and get it to my editor. As you're working through this process, you, you're not gonna have all the answers on the front end. Like you can, you can try to be as organized as you possibly can. I thought I had chapters lined out, like the number of chapters, what was gonna be in each chapter. And then I ended up having so much information in one chapter that I would have to turn it into two chapters. Uh, so I, I had a lot more information than I thought I was going to have. But things will hit you just at the strangest time. Like the, the title of the book was a big deal for me and I hated uh, the, the title that I had just put in as a placeholder. It was like critical incident. Um, I can't remember what it was. It was just something really boring. Uh, my wife and I were taking our, our daily walk and all of a sudden we were just kind of spitballing names and the weight of the badge came to me and she's like, oh my God, that's it. And I thought, yeah, I think that is it. And so um, it, it was perfect. So those things will come to you as you go through the process. My point is you don't have to have all the answers on the very front end. Just start writing. Just let that information come to you. Now mine's, mine's nonfiction, so it, it was a little bit easier for me because I'm, I'm using years and years of experience to, to pull from. If, if yours is a fiction book, yeah, you're gonna have to do a lot of character development, plot uh, development, all of those kinds of things on the front end, but you're, you're gonna change the story. Something's gonna come to your mind, you're going to emphasize certain aspects of it that you didn't expect to, or de-emphasize other areas, maybe it's just not fitting good together. So it, it, it's, a, it's a fluid process, so just let that happen. Uh, don't don't be impatient. Don't like drive yourself to like I got to get it done by this date. Things like that. Um, just just let those things come to you, uh, and it will happen. So as I finished up the book, um, and I, I was I was letting my my wife read each chapter. I was letting Richard read each chapter, and then I reached out to a mental health professional that uh, I knew and trusted, and <clears throat> she'd been working with law enforcement. I actually got her involved in a program here in Kentucky that she's now leading. Um, and I would send it to her just, just to make sure accuracy for the mental health side of things, stuff like that. And I, there's a couple of other mental health professionals that I, uh, I got information from just to, for veracity, just to make sure I'm accurate in what I'm saying. Um, so, you know, once I got all that finished, now I got to find an editor. And I looked online, I can't remember the name of the online service, but there's a multitude of services out there that will, you, you can submit your information. This is what my book is about. This is how many pages it is. Um, and you know, will you, would you wanna be my editor? And so it's like putting a solicitation out there and you get people who will give you bids. And I think my bids were every, anywhere from 4,000 to 7,000 uh, dollars. And my book was a little under 200 pages, I think, by the time I got it finished. And that's another thing, like I had to, I had over 200 pages and I'm thinking, I don't think cops are gonna read this book just because it's so long. And so I actually whittled some stuff out and it was probably some cathartic ventilation that actually came out that, you know, really wasn't pertinent. It was just me blowing off steam or getting a little emotional as I'm writing it that probably didn't lend itself to the overall um, focus of the book. So. I've reached out to, to Richard, my friend again, who had published a couple of books and said, hey, Richard, this is what I'm finding. He said, hey, let me let me do some checking. He found an editor for me. She was a New York Times bestseller and she did it for me for a thousand bucks. And I was so, she's such a wonderful person, wonderful publisher. We connected on a personal level. She's so giving, so serving, uh, just awesome. And her husband was a law enforcement officer. So that helped even more. Um, so that process, like I said, I, I sent, uh, sent Carrie the book in uh, like August the 1st and I ended up publishing my book on uh, November 22nd. So we went back and forth for about two months. 
I really thought the process was going to be much quicker. Uh, I got a little frustrated with myself, um, not with Carrie, because she was awesome, um, that I didn't see those things as I was writing it, but you're just not going to. Um, and so she did a great job of editing my book. Uh, we went back and forth on a couple of things, but uh, at the end, and she told me at the beginning, she's like, hey, this is your book. You know, you, you, you make these words your words. I'm gonna give you suggestions on what I think is best as far as the formatting, editing kind of thing. And, uh, but you have the ultimate decision, obviously. So she was awesome. Uh, so the editing process actually, although it took a couple of months and I got a little frustrated, it was much easier than really what I thought it was going to be and much, you know, uh, less expensive than I thought it was be. It was a thousand dollars that was very well spent on my book. So you're going to make an investment if you write this book. Now, a friend of mine, he did some kind of hybrid version uh, where he invested over $10,000 of his own money in his book. I wasn't, I'm not that vested in my book. I didn't write this book because I wanted to be a New York Times bestseller. Um, uh, like I told you, I think, I, I think I'm still short of a thousand books, but that's okay. I mean, I, I wrote the book. That was my goal, was just writing the book. And the fact that I've sold hundreds of copies in less than two years, uh, and I've had people call me and tell me that it changed their life, that's, that's worth more than money. And um, so I'm, I'm really, really happy with, with that outcome. Next thing I had to do was come up with, well, while I was going through the editing process, uh, I was also going through, I was trying to find formatting software uh, because I was trying to, I was starting to research KDP and how do you, how do you get your, your manuscript actually, you know, uh, uploaded to KDP and again Bethany's uh, videos were were awesome very informational you need to go read or you need to go watch her video because it's it's very informational it helped me tremendously it gave me a lot of confidence to be able to do the self publishing on KDP and it's just easy KDP makes it so easy but I want it formatted I wanted to look you know a certain way I wanted it to look like a book uh, when it got published. I didn't want it to look like a Word document. And so I used some software called Atticus, and I'll put a link in the description. And you simply upload your Word docs into Atticus, and I did it at a chapter at a time, and it allows you to go through a formatting process. Very intuitive. I think they've even made some changes, some improvements since I did my book, but it was, it was easy for me. Um, I mean, and, and it really really adds a lot of uh, quality to your work when it when it's formatted properly. So uh, I think Atticus back then cost me about 70 or 80 bucks. Once again, well worth the money. I wasn't going to be able to do it in Word. Uh, I saw early on where people were doing it in Word. Uh, I wasn't having much luck and I really didn't like how it looked. I wanted it to look like a book. And so um, that's what I used. Um, and I still have it on my desktop just in case I write another book. So uh, that was the formatting. So I was working through that during the editing process, but I didn't get too far because you're gonna make edits and you don't wanna have multiple versions. So I, I was just playing with Atticus, trying to figure it out, like the user interface and things like that. Um, as Carrie, as, yeah, as she's editing my book. And then when she got finished editing, I just dumped it all in there. I knew exactly what I wanted it to be. And so <laughs> it, I did the homework on the front end and it made the formatting piece really, really simple. Um, the next thing is cover art. So you want your book to look good. And so I reached out to a friend of mine I went to high school and college with, and he's an artist and he's a brilliant artist. Like this guy is phenomenal. Um, and I was talking to him about it and he just came up with some, just like he always does. Uh, he, he comes up with just some real quick ideas and I thought, man, that, that sounds great. And uh, his his comment to me is like the weight of the badge and so the badge should should seem appear heavy on the uniform and you probably can't see it on on that one but here's my book and you can see back in, in subdued this background image is a badge and the uniform is actually wrinkled from the badge pulling it down and so I don't know if a lot of people get that it's very subtle but I love the idea and so <clears throat> he actually sent me an image He's like, hey, this is this may be your starting point. And I took it and ran with it. 
So uh, I intended on him creating the entire uh, book cover, but I ended up doing it. And this image came from um, a photograph from a mass shooting in Chicago. I think it was the July 4th parade in 2021 uh, or 22, I can't remember. And I reached out to the, uh, this is my photograph by the way, but uh, the, the idea of the officer with his hands over his face, just like trying to remove what he just saw from his mind uh, came from that photograph from Chicago. I reached out to the uh, photographer who took the picture and try to get his permission, to, you know, I offered to pay him, he never responded. And so I just replicated it <clears throat> my own way. And Adobe, uh, was a huge uh, benefit to me on this, like uh, the font uh, on the spine, the font on the front, like I did all of this in Adobe and then saved it as a PDF. Uh, and Canva, I think I used Canva a little bit uh, so I had I, I bought versions of the, the the Adobe program and Canva just to be able to make this a little bit easier. The book initially had a little bit of a blue cover, like a blue frame around it, to go along with the blue line. The blue line, obviously, everybody knows that's a law enforcement kind of thing, kind of a family crest. And as I was uploading it into um, KDP, I was having a really hard time with those borders and actually created one that didn't have the border. Uh, I didn't center it up correctly in KDP. When it came out without the border, I'm like, I like that better. So I went back and recreated it like that. And this is what we have. And I'm, I love this. This is the hardcover book from KDP. I love it. Like the quality of this is so awesome. It looks so good. It feels so good. It's almost got like a little soft touch to it, but it, it's a hardcover. Like, I love it. I love it. Um, so um, I was able to do all of that. Like I said, I'm a DIYer. I love learning those things and being able to create it and just say that I did it. Um, I was also creating a website uh, during all of this. Uh, the website had an online store. I was ordering challenge coins. I don't have a challenge coin with me. I'll try to insert one just so you can see what that is for the law enforcement folks. Um, and so there was a lot going on uh, during that process. Now, uploading the manuscript to KDP, easy peasy. Like you, you have a PDF, you take that entire manuscript from Atticus, create a PDF from that in Atticus, save that PDF, and then you just upload that into KDP easy like it doesn't get any easier than that the cover art i think i have about six or seven <laughs> proofs of my book just because the cover art was so difficult for me to upload um, i'm not going to get into how to do it anything like that but it was challenging for me just trying to get everything to line up um, and and that just dealt with the spine the front cover, back cover, everything being aligned correctly. And so it was a trial and error piece for me. Um, and like I said, I think the proofs back then were like maybe four or five dollars uh, for a proof. And, and you can you can get the entire book as a proof. And uh, I would highly recommend obviously you do that before you click the publish button on KDP because you, I, I read my book Enough, I probably read it 10 times from front to back and asked my wife to read it a couple of times and we just went through and just kind of tweaked it a little bit, just little things here and there um, that maybe it didn't, it wasn't clear exactly what I was what I was meaning and so I went back and changed those things. Once I got the proof where I wanted it, it's done, it's there forever. And then you just click publish and uh, within a day or two, if that, like my book is ready to purchase on Amazon. And uh, I'll show you a link uh, to that as well. And it's so gratifying, so gratifying. Now, I published on November 11th, and I just put some information on my Facebook page. I created a way to the badge Facebook page just to have that on there. Uh, kind of thinking that, you know, that's gonna be my go-to page for my book. I, I don't do much with it, quite honestly. Uh, I'm just too busy with other things and have been too busy with other things. I haven't really done much with it. So just, I was posting things on my personal page and, my, and the way the badge, uh, and uh, it, it really took off. Like I sold several hundred copies within the first uh, six months. 
And the vast majority of my sales uh, were during that first six months. And I'll, maybe I'll put a graph in here to show you, because KDP does a great job of showing you like what, what you sold last month, what you're selling this month, what you've sold historically, all of that. And makes it really, really simple to keep up with. And uh, at the end of the year, I had a question about taxes. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember if they sent me a 1099 or not uh, for my sales, but they do have a link uh, on the KDP uh, page where it's like it's your page, it's your book, like everything that's associated with your book is on that page, including your tax information. So I went in there and got that off of there and just put that in my taxes. Um, so that was simple. Like uh, Amazon makes it really, really, really simple for all of that information. Um, now I kept spreadsheets um, on everything that I spent because I did not create a business. Uh, that was another question I had. I, I don't have an LLC or you know incorporation, anything like that. Uh, not a nonprofit, nothing. It's just me, um, and, you, and you don't have to. So. If you're going to write a lot of books, then you, that may be something you want to do, but you know, I, I, I may never write another book. So this was this was good enough for me. Um, but I, I wrote off my expenses on my personal taxes um, and uh, my sales, yada, yada, yada. Now I'll tell you, I, pretty much whatever I made on my book, <laughs> the first year I paid in taxes because I'm, I'm still working. Uh, I have a pension from, a, from my first career. And so that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I was making pretty good money. So to pay it back was a little frustrating, but like I said, not in it for the money. Uh, but I did keep very copious notes on what I spent for my business. Uh, it's not a business, but just on my book writing. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's my experience. Uh, like I said, I, I don't watch it as much as I used to. Like my book sales, like every month, uh, every day, I was looking to see how many books I sold. So um, I know, you know, almost, I, I think I'm over 800 books at this point. Uh, that, that's a big deal for me. Like uh, somebody who, who never thought they'd write a book selling 800 copies. And I still sell, you know, a handful every month. Uh, and it, it keeps going. And I don't do really anything to promote it. That was another thing. You know, do my running ads? Am I doing anything else to promote it? I don't really anymore. I barely even talk about it on my Facebook page anymore. Uh, I've had a couple of uh, gigs where I go and speak um, to, you know, conferences, law enforcement related conferences, and just talk about my book and some things that I discovered as I'm writing it. But you know, not much else has come out of it other than just the, the total satisfaction of writing a book. So um, that's my experience. Uh, maybe I'll come back a little bit later on and talk about some other things if I can think about other niches. But there was a multitude of questions that were in that uh, post from Bethany's video. And so I thought, well, what the hell? I'm going to go and talk about my experience real quick. And maybe that helps somebody. Maybe it motivates you to, to finish your book. I hope it does. If you have an idea and you're thinking about writing a book, just start writing and just let it happen. I always say, write when it strikes. So when, when something hits you, go write it down. Just stop what you're doing, take a couple of notes so you can remember what that was. If you can't write out the entire thought process, uh, I was getting my oil change one day and something hit me and I think I wrote like four or five pages just in my iPad on good notes. Because uh, it was just it was just flowing, and I was just like, "Wow, this is awesome!" So you'll be amazed at when that inform you know when that hits you, when that urge hits you. So right when it strikes, and I wish you the best of luck. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. I'll be I'll try to keep up with them this time, and answer them as they come in. Thank you, and have a awesome day.